Hello, this is Gio, and hey look, I have a whole bunch of batteries here, some alkaline uh, batteries, uh, let's see, double A's, triple A's, some nine volt batteries, and I've been in the process of testing these things out to see uh, which ones still have a charge and which ones don't, and I figured I'd kind of show you today uh, the proper way of testing your batteries. Not only will I be using, of course, uh, the voltmeter, actually I have a multimeter here, uh, but we're also going to... Uh, look at that little drop test you might have heard of where you kind of lift up the battery and sort of drop it and based on how it drops you can maybe tell if it's charged or not well we'll try that at the end of this video but first we're going to be using our little multimeter okay so I do have my handy dandy Radio Shack multimeter here and it does have a voltage indicator that we're going to use today now uh, for this one you just turn it to uh, volts and it has an auto range. I'm not sure if you can see there. And so it sort of de defines what, it, it automatically determines what, what voltage based on like millivolts all the way up to, you know, like 100 volts, etc. But some other multimeters you need to actually designate the range. I could actually designate the range here uh, where it's millivolts, etc. Uh, different volt ranges. And you may actually have to do that for your um, multimeter. But for this one, it has an auto adjust feature. So we're just going to keep it at that and start measuring some of these voltages. Now I hope you can read this display here. We'll just start with the, um, now we have a AA battery. Now both the AA and AAA batteries uh, are typically of, uh, one and a half volts. So that's how you would set your uh, multimeter. And of course the nine volt batteries are, are nine volt. Now this one, uh, this uh, Energizer battery, uh, I believe is fully charged. It's a, it's a new battery, so we'll go ahead and measure that. And yes, indeed, it is measuring 1.564 volts. So, so this one's pretty good, so we'll put that aside. Um, now these ones that are kind of laying down, I think are pretty dead. And so we'll go ahead and test this one right here. And this one is showing at 0.998 volts. Now, you may say, well, that's pretty good, you know, from 1.5 to 9.9 uh, 9 volts. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, you've lost some voltage, but it looks like there's still some charge there. But really, um, when when batteries drop below, let's say, uh, uh, probably 1.2 volts, they're really considered dead uh, for the, I'm sorry, for the one and a half volt batteries. Um, they're really 1.2 and below, they're dead. Between 1.2 to 1.35 maybe, they're still generally good depending on the device uh, you have, you're trying to operate. Uh, and anything about uh, above 1.35 volts is still pretty good. And uh, so this one is reading again at 0.9. Uh, and so this one's probably going to be discarded. Some of these ones over here have already sort of sorted. Uh, here's another Energizer one and this one is reading at 1.46 volts. Now that one's pretty good, pretty close to 1.5 now, but if it's a fully fresh battery um, and fully charged, typically uh, the batteries will read over their voltage designation, like, like the one which we had here, which was uh, over 1.5 volts. So uh, they usually start higher than the actual reading. Like here's the 9 volt battery, I just opened this one up, it should record 9 volts or higher. This is brand new and uh, it is uh, 9.41 volts. So uh, that one's doing pretty good. And then, and then this one right here is, I think has died or has gone low. And that one again is 7.64 volts. So this one was in a smoke detector and uh, the smoke detector was beeping. So I took it out and, and there you have it. Okay, so reading uh, the straight voltage that you're getting from a multimeter or a voltmeter is, it, it tells you something but not the whole story because you could technically get the same voltage uh, from two batteries and they're performing totally different. And that's because, let's say sometimes when an older battery, uh, the older battery may have the same voltage as a newer battery but the older battery has degraded and so it's not generating as much current. It can't push out as much current. And that's not really uh, shown in terms of uh, the voltage difference between the negative and positive. Now you may say, well, just with a voltmeter, how can we do that? Well, you do that by adding a resistor uh, crossing your terminals. 
Now this is a 9.1 ohm resistor and you, um, you measure uh, resistance uh, based on ohms. So uh, a 9, so the higher the ohm reading, the greater the resistance. And so um, this is 9.1, this is a 150 ohm resistor. So there's greater resistance here and therefore less current would pass. And so if you want to increase the amount of load by connecting these and crossing these, this with a resistor, if you want to increase the amount of load that the battery feels, you actually use a lower ohm resistor. So the lower ohm would generate greater load. The higher ohm resistor, lesser load. Again, if you cross these, these probes with a straight wire, that almost has no resistance and therefore you would basically get full load and you would get a voltage reading of essentially zero on these batteries. So you don't want to go that far. Now, in general, um, they recommend oh, about 100 to 150 ohm resistor. Uh, I sometimes use this 9 ohm resistor too and we'll, 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 we'll test this one out too. Now, some multimeters actually has a battery testing element to it and you can set it to battery testing and kind of could test your batteries for you. Now inside those, uh, those multimeters have a resistor inside of them and those are typically around uh, 360 ohm resistors, uh, higher than what we're going to use today. But uh, they're also, the multimeters are calibrated to understand what the voltage drop means when that um, when that happens, so so we're going to use slightly uh, lower ohm resistors so we can increase the load difference. Okay, so how we're going to hook these things up? Now we, I just have a couple of these alligator clips, uh, red and um, black, and what I'm going to do is with the black one, I'm just going to connect one side of the black to this black probe. And then I'm going to take my 100 ohm or 150 ohm resistor and just attach it to one end just like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my red probe with the alligator clips. Just clip it there. And on the other side of the resistor, I'm just going to attach it like this. Now the resistor doesn't have any directionality, so you could flip these uh, uh, clips if you want. So I'll just put this aside. And so I'm going to test this, um, this one 9 volt battery again. Now uh, taking the clip off, let, let's remember what it was showing before. It was showing 7.65. Now putting the clip back on, so attaching the resistor, we try it again. And it's now 6.82-ish. Um, and so that the load has decreased the voltage. So let's go to our nicely charged brand new 9 volt battery right here. Again, this one was showing above 15 volts, or excuse me, above 9 volts. So that would be 9.41 volts. Now uh, attach it to our resistor again, like that, and then uh, touch, the, touch the ends. And then it's still above, it's 9.2. So there's a slight voltage drop, but it's still above our 9 volt. And so this, this would be a nice, good battery. Okay, now I do have a lithium, like a 10-year life battery that I had in a smoke detector. And the smoke detector was beeping, saying, change the battery. So um, I did go ahead and check this out, just with the standard probe, no resistor. And I was getting, and you can see there, 9.14 volts. Okay, so what's wrong? I, I'm getting voltage there. But when you actually uh, connect the resistor, look what happens. It drops to below 7. And so that's why it was starting to beep. Same thing with this battery. This battery is uh, without the resistor showing lower voltage, but in, in fact, uh, with the load on it, it's basically, these are almost identical. So uh, both of these were, uh, the smoke detectors were beeping about this. And so maybe under load about 7 volts, um, the smoke detector, it, that's too low uh, 
of a voltage and not enough current. So these things were bad and you can kind of see how the resistor is helping us out. Okay, well let's try the drop test. Now, now this battery here, uh, let me just double check the voltage. Uh, this one is kind of a dead battery. It has given me a voltage of uh, 0.6 right now, 0.6 volts. So this one's pretty well degraded. Um, and then we had a new one, which is right here. There's both energizers. And this one was brand new, so that's well over 1.5. Okay. So this one is good. This one is bad. So the thing with the drop test is, here, let me switch the good one on this side, the bad one on that. Okay. So the thing with the drop test is that apparently when you lift this up and then drop it, if it's charged, it'll just kind of make a thud. Just like that, if, if, if you see that again. Kind of a little hop, but it's just more of a thud, okay? So this one was good. Now, what I understand is, with the drop test, if the battery's bad, it'll kind of jump a little bit more. It may even fall over, but um, both might fall over if you don't do this well, but let's watch this. You can kind of see it jump. So let's try it both together. See if I can do this accurately. You can kind of see this one kind of bouncing quite a bit more. This one's more of a thud. This one's more of a bounce. So we'll do that again. Okay, let's switch it. Now this is the good one on, on this side. And make sure I'm not just discriminating because of my hand. This one definitely does seem like it's bouncing a little bit more. Okay, so this one's bad. Now, now this one's the good one. Now let's grab one of these ones back here that was somewhat good, um, but not, this one is not a, a brand new battery, but it's still within the good range. This one is a brand new battery. So let's try this. Let's see if I can tell a difference here. No. They pretty much drop very similarly. Okay, that one fell. So this one is still the good one. I want to just double check the voltage, make sure I didn't sw swap them. Yes, the, the, this one's still the brand new one. Now we'll grab one of these ones laying down on the ground here. Another one. This one here. Let me quickly check the voltage. This one is 1.4 volts. This one's the brand new one, that one's the 1 1.4 volts. We'll try this one a little bit. And those drop pretty well. But the one that was dead, and I think this one was dead. The one was dead, definitely does have a little bit of a bounce. Now whether I could just take a battery, just out of random without a comparison battery and do this, this, this is pretty clear. It does seem to just do a thud. So this looks pretty new. But if I were just to take any random battery like this and go like that, well, you could probably tell. Yeah, it's kind of bouncing. So maybe this is bad. So this test might actually work. And I've actually done this a number of times with different brand batteries and even with the um, uh, AAAs. And it does kind of work. Now I did do a little bit of research to figure out why. And one of the uh, things I've read is that in general, when it's a fresh battery, there, there is a material inside the battery which is more of like a, a, a gelatin type material. And it will help buffer any bouncing. So it's almost a shock absorber. Where when it starts losing its charge, that gelatin kind of substance um, kind of dries out. And so it becomes a little more dense and a, you know it doesn't absorb energy as much and so it just bounces like a solid object. That was kind of what I read. But I have tested this a number of times. I was skeptical initially, but hey, it kind of works. So if you don't have a if you don't have a voltmeter with you, maybe you could just try these little drop tests and uh, see if you can figure it out. Well, I think the best way is just stick it in your device and see if it works. But you know, that's yeah, there you go. But I hope this video helped you out. I will see you next time. Have a good time.